Good morning, St. Paul's. Good to see you virtually. Uh, we're rolling through the summer, and uh, kids, I guess, are starting to go back to school. So life is, uh, again, changing even in the midst of the things that we're facing. And this morning, I want us to spend a few moments um, in the world of J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth. And uh, if you've not read these books, The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings or not seen the movies, I think you'll still get the gist of what I'm saying and follow the meaning. And to launch us, I'm going to begin with a few quotations. The first one is from the narrator, beginning chapter 4 of The Hobbit. And he says, There were many paths that led up into those mountains, and many passes over them. But most of the paths were cheats and deceptions, and led nowhere or to bad ends. And most of the passes were infested by evil things, and dreadful dangers, end quote. Well, in his essay titled On Fairy Stories, Tolkien explains his inclusion of darker elements in fiction, what we've just referred to in that previous quotation. So in this essay, Tolkien says, quote, Children are meant to grow up and not become Peter Pan's. Not so really to lose innocence and wonder, but to proceed on the appointed journey, end quote. The last quotation is from a lesser known character from the Lord of the Rings named Gilder, and he says this to Frodo, the Hobbit, quote, the wide world is all about you. You can fence yourselves in, but you cannot forever fence it out, end quote. So these quotations all address kind of the challenges that are facing Tolkien's beloved characters, right? Uh, and these are characters, if you've read the books or seen the movies, with whom we have grown fond, um, that there are uh, dangers out there, particularly as it relates to the hobbits who live in this idyllic place called the Shire. And while it may be tempting to close our eyes and hope everything just goes away uh, and that the world does not creep in on us, the stories here remind us that kind of easy, fantastical, and magical answers simply don't translate into the real world. It's why Tolkien says that's why he includes darker elements into his books. You see, there is no wizard like Gandalf to simply wave his staff and solve every single problem without the facing of adversity and sometimes the characters experiencing incredible heartache. You see, a fantasy land that is absent of hardship is untrue in all worlds, and Tolkien knew this. It's why there's uh, darkness and challenge in his stories. And so, as Tolkien, again, from that essay, wisely urges us, we are meant to grow up and proceed on the appointed journey. All right. So, I think that is a nice segue, then, into Paul and what he's relaying in his letter to the Romans this morning. It's a similar type message. He says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Do not be conformed to this world, and this is where I'm going to put in where many paths are cheats and deceptions and lead nowhere, uh, like our narrator said. So don't be conformed to this world, which will lead you in places uh, that you don't want to go, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So Paul is saying, um, I think in other words, we're meant to grow up and proceed on our appointed journey. 
And that appointed journey for us as believers in Christ is the glorious embodiment and flourishing of God's kingdom here on earth. That is our journey. It doesn't have one specific path because um, there are myriad of possibilities in front of us. Um, but the embodiment of the kingdom is our journey. In other words, there's many ways to love somebody. There's not just one way. Um, many ways to serve other people, not just one way. And those are the opportunities that we discern with the Holy Spirit as they come upon us. But they're all the embodiment of God's kingdom. So instead of facing goblins and spiders and treacherous forests like uh, our heroes in Middle Earth, for us, we're confronted with our own set of antagonistic adversities. And these adversaries currently, right now, are this deadly virus and what I'm going to call a poisonous and malignant zeitgeist. I like that word. Do you know the word zeitgeist? Here's what it means if you don't. The defining spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and beliefs of the time. So I've heard it condensed to say that the zeitgeist is the spirit of the age, kind of the attitude of the age. What's the defining spirit or mood of our particular time in history right now? Well, it might be several things, but I think one thing is clear, at least to me, is that part of the zeitgeist is a really extreme form of either or thinking. That you're either 100% for this, and if you're not, then you're against us. So it's, it's very much um, working in divisions that you're this or you're this. And if you're this, you cannot be part of this. So it's either or. There's no gray. It's either you're 100% or you're 0%. And what that results in is really caustic divisions between people. And that seems to be the zeitgeist right now. And it's the dreadful danger, as our narrator uh, above said, as we look at these mountain passes, it's the dreadful danger that has awaited us on the path that we have chosen uh, as the American people. But, you know, thanks be to God. What did Jesus tell Peter in our gospel reading this morning? He says, I, Jesus, will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. So the divisive and corrosive spirit or zeitgeist, this attitude of Hades will not last and it cannot stand against the love of God. It cannot. So it might feel dark at the moment, but we are heralds of the dawning of a new kingdom, which Jesus says is at hand. It's, it's here among us. It's, it's this intermingling of, um, of existing times and ages and kingdoms right now. So we are heralds of the arrival of the kingdom of God against which the gates of division and Hades and uh, toxicity simply cannot stand. And you might say, well, who? Me? I'm a hero of this? <laughs> That's exactly right. You. You certainly are. Because if you, we go back to Paul's passage to the Romans today, um, it echoes something he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, right? He uses the illustration of one body and many members. We don't all have the same function, but we do have our own part to play in this adventure, this embodiment of the kingdom, our appointed journey. Just as our heroes in those books had their parts to play, so too do we have ours. And never, ever underestimate your contribution. The things you do to embody the light and love of God may seem insignificant to you. 
but you never know what kind of impact they may have on the heart of someone around you. And not only that, but the impact they might have in the greater society and world. You see, one of the principles that holds true throughout these stories of the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings is that everyone is going to need help at one time or another. Nobody just goes it alone, if you know the stories. There's no superhero figure that saves the day all by themselves. And Paul says to the Romans, and indeed to us, we are members of one another. Your story, my story, our story. It's not just one loose strand with no connection to others in this huge tapestry of God's kingdom. You're part of a larger reality, this grand narrative. You have an important part to play, a necessary part. And I understand that sometimes it's scary. And right now we're in a particularly scary time. But as Tolkien explains, we're meant to grow up and to proceed on an appointed journey. We're equipped by God's Spirit to face even times like this, which seem a bit more dark and a bit more scary. We're also equipped with that beautiful promise that we heard Jesus tell Peter today. I'm building this church, and the gates of Hades will not win. Amen.